Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Network Merchandise Shop. Check out our large assortment of logo merch and our lifestyle collection as well. Just head over to abvnetwork.com and click on shop. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. Finally, we are sponsored by the upcoming ABV Barrel Shop, a new liquor store experience coming to St. Louis, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop will serve as home to the ABV Network and will be owned and operated by Steve Akeley, Jim Fosnott, and Scott Creighton, a.k.a. the Barrel Buddies. To learn more about the investment opportunities in this new venture, listen to the ad at the end of this podcast. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we discuss McNew's bourbon journey. That's me. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Joe Ferrara, Tim Swaya, and Kathy Cool. Hey, gang. What's up? Hey, everybody. Hi, McNew. Hey, McNew. <laughs> How are we doing, McNew? Yeah. Celebrate McNew. Everything McNew. So, yes, I heard McNew. Uh, I listened to her show the other day. She was, uh, you That's know. That's the one that I, I was on. I had to listen. She was on a different uh, competing network. I had to make sure she wasn't. Oh my god! Yeah, I had to make sure she wasn't jumping ship. So it was fine. She was just doing an interview. I, so. I gave you a lot of credit, Steve. Yeah, I got I got credit in there by name, so that was nice. That was I fun. listen to her bottle kills and last meals every week. Oh yeah, it's funny. Yeah, thank you for that. Well, let's go. Let's go. So yes, yeah, so we'll be talking to McNew about her bourbon journey. But before we get to that, Kathy said there's something she want to talk about now, though. What is that, Kathy? Yeah, so we, during the break, we're talking about uh, different cities, yes. and it reminded me of one of my first alcoholic drinks. Okay. So I want to ask all of you to tell me about the memory of your first alcoholic drink, and I'm guessing it's before you turn 21. Okay. Okay. Kathy's asking us to incriminate ourselves, which is yeah, exactly. I'll go first. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Joe. Uh, when I was six years old, I was the <laughs> ring bearer at my my uh, aunt Laura's wedding, and at one point, I'm walking around and there's everybody's dancing, so there's, there's all these drinks on the table, and I'm just picking them up and I'm drinking them all, and I don't remember how much I drank, but. Apparently, I drank a lot because my parents realized I was drunk at that point. And as we're leaving, they take me outside and I just start barfing all over the place. Yeah, you were lit. You were lit. Yeah. yeah. You were Spalding in Caddyshack. So that was my first drink. Spalding. <laughs> at six years old. Six, six years old. Maybe That's seven at the most. Yeah. You started young, young. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. That's almost 60 years of drinking. Yeah. I, I mean, I, my first drink that I remember was bourbon. So uh, I, I've told this many times that my family did not drink, but they drank at holidays. So, you know, 4th of July was bourbon slushes at, uh, at Thanksgiving. It was their take on the Godfather, which wasn't scotch and amaretto. It was bourbon and amaretto. And then it, you know, Christmas, they do eggnog. And I remember, you know, being at one of those parties and they were like, you want to just try the bourbon? And I, was, I didn't, I, I liked it. And then I had another drink. My, my, I remember my aunt Donna was like, oh, he's going to get sick. He's going to get sick. I was like, I just had two tiny drinks. It's not like I'm going to get sick from that. But yes, I, I remember drinking bourbon and liking it, uh, you know, at a very young age. And, you know, I don't know. It was okay. Don't go after my mom. Uh, don't, don't arrest my mom. This was a long time ago. So, yeah. No, so uh, I was a kid that, uh, but yeah. the statute of limitations is up. Yes, I yeah. think so. I think so. So, but yeah, we, and, and we would continue 
continue to uh, drink things. So that was, the, you know, the official, first official taste was that. And then we would continue to drink that. My cousins and I, when they weren't looking, we would sneak some of that bourbon slush in the summertime we particularly liked. And that amaretto drink, too, was not that bad, really. Uh, I don't know that I'd like it now, but, uh, you know, as a kid, that amaretto is pretty sweet. And, uh, yeah, the, the, their version of that was the Godfather was good. So, uh, yes. So bourbon. I've always been a bourbon guy, uh, which is kind of cool. It was meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Tim? First drink. I spent a lot of time with my mom's parents and my grandparents on on that side. My grandfather was, would come home at, uh, he always say quitting times at about two o'clock on the weekends when I'm doing family stuff and working around the house or anything like that. So, you know, go get me a can of grandpa's juice. And my mom would hate when he'd say that to us. So I think I started off with beer farts on Bush Light uh, (laughs) for the longest time. Uh, as I probably it, from I can you remember, drink bush light that you poop corn. I, I believe that is true because it corn is, is a fake food and it shows up there all the time. Wait, eat it, it comes right back out the same way. It's a bush beer, you're gonna poop corn. Yeah, yeah, there yeah you go. so I was uh, yeah, there it is. It was a uh, bush light, uh, taking a sip as I popped it for him before he uh, sat down in the lawn chair, uh, put his uh, you know, crossed his legs and then settled in for an uh, evening of drinking. No. McNew, how about you? So I do think my first drink was probably a beer that my dad had because, you know, it's like 80s, 90s parents. Like they thought it was funny to like let you have some beer. Like people probably don't do that now. But um, it was funny then. I've never been a beer liker. Like my dad was a cheap beer drinker. He was a Bush Light guy. He was a Budweiser guy before that. Like he didn't drink good beer, right? So I never liked beer, but probably beer was my first drink ever. But the first thing I got drunk on was smearing off ISIS when I was 17. <laughs> God. <laughs> it was two when I was passed out in a field because that's the kind of parties we had. Wow. Two yeah. and you're passed out. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Started Kathy, with news journey. Yeah. Kathy, you asked the question. <laughs> what, yeah. What, uh, I did. what about for you? Um, well, you know, my dad was also a cheap beer drinker. He drank Natty Light. So mm-hmm. uh, there was always... That's yeah, funny. so I had sips, but I was never a fan. Mom always made a punch with the ice cubes where she would pour pineapple juice and put a cherry in the ice cubes and then make a big rum punch bowl. Um, but my first time I had a cocktail or a real drink, uh, we went to New Orleans and it was a family trip for my best friend. So it was her mom and dad. And uh, my friend and I, and we had a pop-up camper and we drove and we get to New Orleans for Bastille Day and there's a parade and it's all fun. And her mom was like, I have to have a mint julep. I'm in New Orleans. I have to have a mint julep. So she pops out of the minivan, goes into a bar, gets a mint julep in a go cup, comes back, takes a drink and says, I hate it. Said, I'll take it for you. So I drank the entire mint julep and it was delicious. Refreshing. Yeah. It was refreshing. And I got a little drunk. Oh, there you go. For the Bastille nice. Parade. So that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, you know, first drink of uh, mint julep's not bad. I mean I know, yeah. right? Yeah. Very right right high Right in there. Yeah. Very high bro. Very yes. Fear not ice. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, guess what? We're all legal now and it is time to drink. So what is everyone drinking? Let's start this time with McNew. I am going to go with some Bond and Lillard from the Whiskey Baron. Not much. Not much. Squeaky. It's going to be enough to uh, keep the lead because I have a screw top. I've got the ancient, ancient age, 10 star not 10 years 10 star so uh yes i uh i'm gonna do a, a last show pour but it's not gonna be enough there's too much in here oh, to it. we can do it come on come on danny I, i'm gonna do it all but uh it's not gonna be enough there's more than it's six ounces plastic handle bottle, though, Steve. it's a handle bottle yeah so yeah yeah Ooh. tip to the tippy top there's there you go more last pours in there there's two more shows That's a lot. Up there for yeah. sure yeah there's there's still more shows left there so all right uh what about you kathy what do you got so in honor of mcnew i have a tiny bottle of larceny (laughs) (laughs) when i had a birthday party a couple of years ago and my party favors were tiny bottles of bourbon and a bar of chocolate and a 
whiskey glass. So this is a leftover and it's a screw top. Yeah. Okay. All right, Tim, how about you? I am also in honor of McNew because I know she loves her tiki drinks. I've got a bottle of Rolling Fork Rum from our friends, uh, Jordan Morris and Turner Wathen. This yeah. is the 8.8-year uh, uh, four-square Barbados finished in a Weller uh, cask. Nice. Ooh, yummy. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, Nothing. All right. Joe, what do you got? About a month ago, I found a bottle of Wild Turkey Decades on a shelf. Ooh. Okay. Nothing. It was, I heard it. It was so springy, so weird, but good. Yeah. Who, who do we think won that one? This was uh, pretty pathetic, really. I, honestly, it's got to be McNew. It's her show. Well, let's open up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go through all my bottles until I get one. Go <laughs> with that weird noise that uh, it doesn't even sound like it. For the spring option, so let's some reverb on it. I, th right? I think it's going to be McNew. I think we got to give it to McNew. It's McNew. Cheers. Thank you. Guys. All right, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking to McNew about her bourbon journey. We'll do that in just a few. Hello, this is Steve Akeley of the ABV Network. Let's talk about the people who make this show happen. First up is Leatherwood Distillery in Pleasant View, Tennessee. Company founder Andy Lang started distilling as a hobby while serving his country as an elite Green Beret. Andy distilled all over the world during his time in the military and brought this passion back to him in the U.S. when he returned home. A visit to Leatherwood combines Andy Lang's unique distilled spirits and a museum of artifacts from his time serving the U.S. Share a drink with a fallen soldier at their bar where you can grab an acrylic bio off the wall that celebrates the individuals who gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect his or her country. They will also ship their distilled spirits directly to you, so check them out at leatherwooddistillery.com. We are also sponsored by Moonshine University. This longtime partner for the ABV Network helps educate individuals looking to get into the distilled spirits business, service industry employees looking to expand their knowledge, and individuals simply wanting to know more about the process and history of the spirits industry. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification at Moonshine University, and it's something I continuously draw upon and connect with fellow graduates. Check out their full listing of classes, including Executive Bourbon Steward Certification, production classes, and more at moonshineuniversity.com. Okay, let's talk about Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows, and we became friends during my frequent visits to Kentucky. Today, he's leading the way for young distillers making their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery combines family history, a look at what makes their products unique, and of course, a tasting through their whiskeys, moonshines, and creams. Check them out at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com and visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. All right, back to the show. Hello, this is Matt Rainey, and you are listening to the Bourbon Daily. One day when I grow up, I'm going to grow a big boy beard, just like Colonel Steve. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we're talking about my bourbon journey. Yes, we are. So, McNew, I don't know. It's been amazing to to watch what's happened with you. I mean, uh, you know, I recently uh, was going through and listening to your first show ever, and it's it's been fun to see where you've come uh, from that time. I mean, you were a bourbon fan and you liked you know, bourbon history. You went to the bourbon trail and stuff like that before I met you. But, you know, at that time, I think you had three bottles in your collection or something really low. I mean, not a lot. I, I did. So I was. And I you was, were very much against a person having what you would call a collection. I, you were I like, was, why would you ever need that? You just buy what I, you drink. I like what I like. I am going to drink what I like. I'm going to replace it every week, every two weeks, whenever I go to the store. I did not have a collection. I did not understand collections. And now I have a loft in my house, which really could be a second living room, I guess, if you're a realtor, but um, turned into a bar that has whiskey yeah. shelves. 
so that I has a collection a that has a pretty big collection now, i guess i mean i open everything i don't just put things on shelves i do yeah everything. but if, you, if you're in the industry and you're definitely in the industry if you're in the industry you want to try different things but you can't drink that much you can't there's no way you can keep up with all the stuff that comes out no so sometimes i get packages and they just pile up in my office because I, I i work from home my day job i work from home so packages just pile up in here. My husband will be like, what's in that? What's in that? It looks like a bottle. I'm like, I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm going to open them on Saturday when I have time. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you know. yeah and then I, I even, you know, early on you were, you know, very much against uh, no stress when it comes to you know, whatever you drink, you just finish it off and then you buy the next bottle. And now you, you, they came to a time when there's uh, can be stressful at the end of what, cause you're like, I don't know what I'm going to get this one again. Right. It I mean, does. that's why you started bottle kills the show because it, it forced it you to do that. Apparently I got very annoying. So I'd get something special and I'd be like, wait, I have like this much in it. I know the audience can't see me, but like I'm holding my fingers like in like an inch, an inch measurement of, um, it would have that much left in it, which would literally just be a pour. And my husband would be like, why is that on the shelf? We could literally just go buy a new bottle of something else and replace it. But I'm like, but I want this bottle. But now I'm like, I have to kill off this bottle. So I had to find a reason because I wanted those bottles to be celebratory in a way, I guess, to finish them. So then I started bottle kills and last meal. So I'd kill off this bottle and tell you a story about a murderer and his last meal. And apparently people love that. And I'm excited that they do. So <laughs> yeah. what, uh, what do you guys want to ask McNew about her bourbon journey? Joe, we'll start with you. What do you what, what's something you want to ask McNew? Uh, originally, uh, um, your favorite was larceny. Is that still your favorite or have you kind of branched out into different taste profiles? I wouldn't say that's still my favorite. I actually don't know what my current favorite is because I have, I have so many more right. options now, right? But I think larceny, if I'm going to just be like, man, it was a really shitty Tuesday at work. I just want to drink to drink. I'm going to have larceny. Larceny is still very much a go-to for me because it's, one enjoyable, one findable, three affordable. I get, I have easy access to larceny, and I very much like it. I I still drink that regularly. Like, is it my favorite? Is that what I would recommend to people? I would tell people to get it if they're new, um, not seasoned people, probably. But um, I, I'm no. still. Yeah, but you used to be all larceny all the time. I mean, it was like, what are you right. drinking, McNeil? I'm drinking larceny. I like mm -hmm. larceny. That's what's your I favorite. Know. I like larceny. Yeah. I still like it, but um, still on my shelf. Still have plenty of bottles of it. Still what I'm drinking probably three days a week. <laughs> but um, not what I'm always promoting now. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a, a friend that I went to high school with, and I hadn't talked to him for a long time, but uh, I connected with him through a friend, and he's a drinker, and he only drinks larceny. And I was like, oh. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what? And I'm like, well, that's kind of, yeah, I don't that's know. Fun, but yeah. I think it's a great intro, right? Like if mm -hmm. you're like, maker's mark wasn't enough. Larceny had a little bit of an edge to it, a little bit different. Larceny was a different weeded bourbon. And I think that's a good intro. And I think that's great. Still $28, like. I'm not feeling sad about it if I drink a and bottle. You can find it. That's always nice, too. I've yeah. never been a fan of larceny. Right. Yeah. So, it's, it wasn't for me. Yeah. Renee, I love Renee so much. She's so beautiful. I love her so much. But um, she's she does a, not like larceny. She's no. another one. Yeah. I hate her. She's like, I hate her. And that's fine. She just doesn't like it. It's okay. <laughs> no. Kathy, what do you want to know about McNew so, and her bourbon this journey? Is what I, this is what I love about McNew is she is completely unapologetic about what she loves. Right. And even if there are haters, she's like, you know what? I don't care. This is what I love. Even and when she's wearing the wrong shoes while watch, walking on cobblestone streets, she just yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just love that I, that she knows what she loves. But um, my question is, so you know, Steve isn't a spring chicken anymore. Do you see yourself leading the ABV network into the future? Um, he always said that was going to be my position. I think I really just need to get more serious about life and like focus in on everything Steve does. He's very much a morning person and I'm very much a night person. So everything he does at 5am, I'm going to be like, got to do this at 3am. 
okay, got it. Like the transition is going to be weird probably, but I think we, Steve and I have a great connection. Love Steve so much. Um, I think we can make it work with a lot of good communication. Yeah, that's uh, that's coming, uh, you know, quicker than people think. I, I mean, I, I would assume people listen to this and they just assume that I want to do this for the, forever. I want to, I want to no. be, I, I don't want to do this forever. I'm, I'm, I, for I will turn 54 and I'd kind of like to, at this point, slowly turn some things over to McNew and then, uh, and then, you know, as, as I begin the phase out then, and, uh, you know, still do some things that, that help her, but. Um, I, I'd like to, I'd like to keep the company going. I'd like to keep the ABV network going long after I retired from this. So, and McNew is, is the key to that. So, yeah, I think that's, I that's really great at it. Steve, I've been with you since 2017 It's 2022. It's been five years. Like it does not seem like it's been five years. I know. I know. It'll so we need to, we need to talk and I, I want to talk to McNew, what she sees the company being, because I do think that everything still is so important. Like, Bourbon Zeppelin, I think, is incredibly important. We don't make any money off Bourbon Zeppelin, but I think it it really helps us be an important a- part of the industry. So mm-hmm. I want to talk to her about that. How do we how do we keep a, a publication going? Because you have to do that. You have to. You're not the only writer, but you do have to write some stuff. And she writes for it already, but you have to you know, maybe get into some feature articles and stuff like that. And and you can't believe how many how many PR people take you seriously because you have that publication, and that's important. And I, I don't know that you, you, you know, you, if you're thinking about this, that you see that as important because again, you're not making any money off of it, but I think it's incredibly important and it opens doors for you. And hopefully you see the importance of that. And again, eventually I would like to turn that over to her and I may still be a writer for it. I may still contribute, but um, so, you know, I want to talk to McNew. Does, does she think all these things that we do are important and does she want to do those things? And, uh, you are important. and I think it has more impact than I think it has more impact than we see on a daily basis. Like Mm -hmm. we're like doing what we do. It's what we do, but it has more of an impact than we actually know. And we can look back and know that it did like three months ago. We'd like, Oh, that event was huge. This was great. And we don't see it in the time being, but we know it's huge. So we don't have any ads in there or anything, but you know, the fact that all the distilleries reach out to us and say, could you put some bourbon Zeppelin? Could this, that's important to them. So it's important to us too. So um, Yeah, uh, I, I think that stuff's huge. So yeah, I just want to talk about these things. So we'll we'll do that. Uh, uh, you know, I'm coming to that that birthday where I'd like to start to wind down a little bit. And uh, I always said I want to retire when I'm fifty. You need to get out. Right, right. I don't want to get out, but yeah, I'll. Uh, I just want to know that it's going into good hands. Yeah, I, I want to work out a deal where it transitions over time, and uh, you know, I I kind of phase out, and uh, but at some point to turn over the the range totally to McDo and and know that. Uh, maybe somewhere down the road, she turns it over to someone else and the, the ABV network can keep going forever would be a really cool thing versus, you know, something that I did. And then it ends when I'm done with it. Great. So. There's always new talent. Like there's, we have Kaylee Baker, Kaylee, like, oh my God. Like, I think she's the next greatest host. I freaking love her so much. Like Kaylee is talent. So we we're always going to find new people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Jim, what do you want to ask McNeil? So, McNew, I came across you for the first time when you lit the internet on fire with the infamous 4th of July picture. <laughs> um, <laughs> that one. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, that, that, that single-handedly uh, uh, excommunicated uh, Jeff from Iowa from the ABV network, I believe. It was, <laughs> was definitely, I think, the ending factor. We don't even get to talk Jeff. to him anymore. I can't talk directly to Jeff because of that. Yeah. Uh, yes, been- yes. We lost, we lost one of our biggest fans because of the the 4th of July picture. So I, I'm going to be unapologetic about it because I feel like I know who I am. I know what I look like. And I've always respected women who like Marilyn Monroe, like Bunny, Jelly Roll's wife, you know who she is. Um, women that like know who, what their bodies are and can use that to promote what they want to promote. Like girl, go get it. Like God either gave you brains or a body. Sometimes he gave you both use it for what you have. And I am not mad at women that do that. And women that are, I'm like, baby, let me help you. Like it is. That's my whole stance on that. (laughs) So, so that's where I, that's where I came across you first. And then I found Steve at Neely family. We bumped into visiting Neely on a, on a tour, just, just picking up Neely to go to and visit and we crossed paths. And then, uh, and then you again, 
light the internet on fire with your brother's bond interview with Ian Somerhalder with the first one ever with that brand that was launching. So I, I, I in that time frame, you've also gotten married and you also mm-hmm. inherited a collection of crown Royal. Yeah. So oh, I'm yeah. curious to hear about your bourbon journey of how you were able to convert your your whole house with Crown Royal and merge that whole thing and and do that because you're such a larceny bourbon girl and Crown Royal with how, your how'd you, uh, yeah how'd you get Chris on the Crown Royal yeah. okay so how'd you get this done yeah first of all Tim I gotta say thank you for the brothers and bond because you have the connections you you are really behind the scenes making that happen so a thousand percent appreciate you for that so grateful for you you you're the one that made that happen um but the Crown Royal thing, like, my husband's, like, he wasn't a whiskey guy, really. Like, he was just kind of, like, a I drink in small town bars kind of guy. He'd drink, like, some well whiskey or some beer or whatever. He was happy. And he, was, he got into, like, this Crown Royal group because our neighbor was and some of his <laughs> friends were. Like, they were they were Crown guys. And I was just like, no, that's trash. And um, very much converted him over. But I kind of feel bad because now I'm like, you like what you like and that's okay. But. We gave him so much help from me, Steve. Everybody on the AB Network gave Chris <laughs> so much help. I kind of feel that now. But, uh, <laughs> but seriously. I mean, I kind of feel bad too, but at the same time, then I go back and think he was a crown royal drinker. And you know, these these, these people that are like, oh you man, that peach that crown royal ways. peach is amazing. No, it's not. It's terrible. You needed help. Yeah, yeah, it's I terrible. So Chris is not a drinker. Chris does not drink even comparatively to what I do during a week. And um, he was just like, I, I just want these bottles because somebody said this is a good bottle. I'm like, it's a shit bottle because it's Crown Royal. Even yeah. though like, it have been like a $2,000 bottle in the Crown Royal world, he would flip it and buy me more bourbon. So I, I looked out, I guess. <laughs> so there you go. It enhanced your bourbon journey. That's yeah. love. Yeah. That is That's love. it. Yeah, his his Crown Royal collection. So yeah, he sold his crap and gave you money. Have like five five ish Crown Royal bottles right now. So you still have some Crown Royal at the house? No, we do. Which, which one's your favorite? Yeah, which is your favorite, McNeil? Okay, so I'm not going to hate on that Crown Royal rye. That is a damn good rye. That Crown Royal rye. Fantastic. I drank most of it. Honestly, that was his bottle. I drank probably three fourths of it. It's a damn good bottle. We've had multiple bottles of it. I drank most of it. He's like, you don't even like Crown Royal. I'm like, that rye is fucking good. The, the Crown Royal Rye Rye Star. Star Crown Royal Rye. Okay. Okay. Well, there you but go. You know Freddie Freddy is using it for some Booker's things. He gets stuff from Canada sometimes. He does, yeah. They've got they've got distilleries up there, and he'll he'll get some Canadian whiskey. I've I've liked a couple Canadian whiskeys recently. Seagrass being one of them. Seagrass is oh, I am loving Sorry. Alberta, the Alberta Alberta ones. Alberta, yeah. Alberta, premium. Alberta Premium. Yeah. Oh my god! Um, like the whiskeys, like the Canadian whiskeys, like the Canadian whiskeys that mix up like the Crown Malt and the bullshit. Like I'm not. Here uh, to yeah, who wants that? Bourbon. That's bullshit. Yeah. They, they stand yeah. out now. Like I used to not think like I knew flavors, but um. When there's fake flavors in a whiskey, like it's right there on the tongue for me. And I'm like, that's trash. I don't want it. Yeah. So bourbons is where I'm at. Rice, American rice mostly are where I'm at. So I don't have yeah. like the fake flavors. So can I ask a secondary question? Sure. Okay. You started out with a drunk night on on what? Ice? Something ice? Smear ice. Yeah. Smear Smear ice. Smear ice and falling yeah. asleep and yeah, passing out in the field. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Off of two spirit off ice. Two, you, two bottles. Dude. When did you find bourbon? <laughs> oh my. So, okay. So after my spirit off ice days, I became a Jack and Coke girl. Like I, I was just a party girl. Like I just wanted to have fun. I'm like, whatever I drink. Some no. Bit, I a <laughs> tree from a pretty redneck area, which is fine. Love you all. Um, Redneck Jack and Coke was my vibe. I went to a lot of country concerts, went to a lot of parties. Jack and Coke was the vibe. So I got my first big girl job in insurance. So I'm sitting at this restaurant. I got invited to this like manager's meeting at a restaurant after hours. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I know that I cannot order a Jack and Coke here and just have a good time. So my manager from Chicago was down in Richmond and he's like, I'll have a makers on the rock and the water. 
And I just said, I'll have what he's having. <laughs> Cause I didn't know what to do. I'm like, I can't fucking order, order like fucking Jack and Coke. So I just I said, makers on the rocks, no water. And um, then I realized makers had some flavor and makers was interesting. So after that dinner, I went home, put my ass on my computer and just like looked up makers mark, researched makers mark, got obsessed with makers mark, bought a lot of it, went there. That was my first distillery tour. Um, makers mark was my intro, honestly. Yeah, that's pretty That's cool, actually. Another weeded bourbon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she likes the weeders, no doubt. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And, you know, you recently were on this other show. You're not leaving the ABV network, are you? No, absolutely not. So, okay. So, the Jeff Reynolds show, Jeff was a friend from high school. He was two years ahead of me. He's uh-huh. had a whole radio career. If you listen to him, this man has like a whole radio voice, right? right. Just, he's got the radio voice. Yeah. He does. So, he's been on like hey, some your of the voice is fantastic. And he was like, he sent me a message Hey, will you come on my show? He's like trying to start his own podcasting on the side. And I was like, Yeah, absolutely. Because my, my policy is like, I never say no if somebody asks me to come on a show. So, I said yes. And um, he was like, McNew, uh, Bourbon Steward. And I was like, oh, my God, you like hyped me up. That's really cool. And all the time, you just asked me about bourbon and bourbon stuff. And I felt like it was really great. And I was like, oh, my God, I really owe everything to Steve Akeley. Like, Steve brought me on a podcast. I didn't know what a podcast was. <laughs> now here Yeah, I I, but I listened to that. And it was it was a good show. But Tell I, me about I, that, too. Yeah. How your first podcast with Steve. Oh, yeah. How did you get invited on? And what was that like for you? He literally sent me a message on Instagram saying, hey, I have a podcast. Do you want to come on? And I said, yeah, sure. It's on Friday nights. And I was like, so at that time, I was like killing myself for my job because I was like trying to be like senior management, like trying to kill we, myself. We, we did get to know each other because of Jefferson's Bourbon, by the way. So, like, so they had this like, it's, what was it, like an ambassador program? And they wanted Correct. To- correct. And they came okay. to me because I've got the shows and all that. They said, could you get some millennials to, to, you know, get involved? We, we think that's really the future of, of bourbon and stuff like that. I'm like, well, I don't really know anyone. So I started looking through my feed and McNew was on there. And I just, I, I, I'd followed McNew, never even talked to her. Yeah, I, I, I didn't, I did the bourbon trail and posted a lot of photos. Yeah. So I saw she <laughs> oh, okay. the bourbon trail and did all that. So, so I asked McNew to, you know, Hey, do you want to be part of this Jefferson's group? She said, yes. And got, got involved in that. So that's how we first met one another, but then t- take it through then, you know, me asking you to be on the show. Yeah. So I came on the show. It was, I feel like that night was like, a sh- looking back now, it was a shit show of shows. Like you had was. Host, I'd never hosted before somebody who was a guest that was a hot mess. And I, I was trying very much not to be a hot mess, <laughs> and then I turned out to be afterwards. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you called me after you're like, Hey, you were great. Do you want to be a host? I need a new host. I was like, yeah. And I was still was like, what the fuck's a podcast? Like it was, people- uh, it was- <laughs> It was weird because McNew was this millennial person, obviously very different age group than myself, but she, she came on. She was good at the show. She was professional, uh, which I don't know that you know, viewers professional now. She's just McNew. I, I mean, you know, fun, fun person, but uh, you know, on that, on that first show, she was very professional, but also had the background and the willingness to learn about the industry. So I, I just said, Hey, we need another co-host, you know, would you like to do this? And by the way, it's every Friday night, you know, I thought there's no way she'd say yes to that. Cause I, I thought someone young who was single would be like, no, Out on Friday. I, I'm not going to commit to Fridays. And she said, yes. So we started, you know, McNew. And to this day, we're recording right now on a Friday. McNew has continued to be you know, five years into this has con- given up her Fridays to be part of so the I was even, like hosting a training class all week or going to Chicago all week. And I'm like, Fridays, I'm like, I'm not fucking going out. Yes, I will stay home and talk to you about whiskey. Yes. <laughs> I, re- I remember being on shows years ago with you and you just kind of like fell off the screen. <laughs> Yeah, she fell off her chair <laughs> famously. And you were not also like, I'm okay. And it came back up. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's a Putin rally girl. She's a Putin rally. Yes. This is the thing that I've learned about the Bourbon Daily. Because when I was very young on the Bourbon Daily, I'm just like, we're drinking on every show. So I would pour like some whole ass. Yep. I think that was fine. Yeah. How, how, how old were you when we started the Bourbon Daily with you, McNeil? You're, you're 27. I'm 27. 30. Yeah. 
27 years old coming on the Bourbon Daily. Yeah. I was worried she was going to say 18. Yeah, no, <laughs> God, no. God. She was young. I mean, yeah. Her, yeah. Five years for sure. Yeah. So, so yeah, what a, what a journey it's been. And I don't know. I, I have to say, as I, as I listen to the stuff, I had no idea about the show or anything like that. I just see she's on the show and I listen. I was like, she knows more than the host does. I mean, McNew. Uh, you know, I, I listen to that show. And I'm like, you know, McNew knows about bourbon, the world of bourbon. She's in the world of bourbon. And this guy who's the host of the show is, you know, running a good show. He's got a good voice. He's got the radio voice, but McNew is the star here. I, McNew, McNew is making the show happen in, in my mind. Um, he actually works for Sun King Brewery. So he works for a beer place, but, um, he, he wants to be in the spirits industry. He wants to be in the podcasting industry. He's a very good person. But I'm just like, you have to come on. Of course, I'll come on. He's just like, me as a bourbon steward. And I'm like, you're hyping me up. Of course, I'm going to come on. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, that was good. It was good to hear. So, so you've mentioned bourbon career. steward a few times. What was that like going for that? Yeah. What was that like? Program? What was that for you? What made you do that? And how was it? Yeah. I, I've just always had fun. I'm just always like, yes, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to have a drink. And it, if it, it goes where it goes, right? Like, I've always been, like, a it goes with the flow kind of person. I'm like, if the Bourbon Daily didn't work out, it didn't work out. Like, I didn't even know what a podcast was. So, I'm grateful. Yeah. That but becoming a bourbon steward, why, why did you do that? Uh, again, I... You know, like like Justine, I, I think Justine knows as much as anybody about bourbon. She she lives in that world by hanging out with us all the time and being on the shows. But she won't she won't she's taking like the whole class, but she won't finish it because she doesn't want to take the test. She's worried she'll flunk the. T- she's so worried she, she's so worried she'll fail so that she won't take the test. Which, by the way, she'll she hey. right through it. She knows everything that there is to know about no. bourbon, but she's, I, she's afraid of failure. I think she did the online version like I did. Um, yeah, that's correct. Which is very anxiety inducing. I'm like, what if nobody likes my flight? Like they're gonna hate it. No, they're they're gonna they're gonna say it was fucking great. You did the best you had with what you had, and um, they're gonna tell you did a good job and they're gonna give you some feedback. Maybe you don't always like the feedback, but they're gonna pass you, you're gonna do a good job. Um just do it, just do it. I don't maybe girl needs to get more more confidence. Well, what made it what motivated you to do it? Because I just wanted to know more. So when I signed up for it, I was like, I just want to know more. I didn't care about credentials. I didn't know what really was a credential. So I just took into a lot of things, not knowing things. So I'm just like, yeah, that seems fun. I want to know more. I, I jumped down a lot of rabbit holes. <laughs> so <laughs> I did with that. And I'm like, oh, cool. I get a credential after it. That's great. Yeah. I didn't know it meant anything at the time, but now it's cool. Yeah. Right. Well, very, very cool stuff. There's a little bit about McNew's journey. I mean, she's had a heck of a career in the bourbon industry. I, I don't know that she knows how well respected she is in the world of bourbon. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I, I, I watch your posts and I see Chuck Cowdery commenting all the time or Mary, Mary Beth yes, from, so from MB Roland. And, and I mean, these are, this is a big deal. Our posts, though, like, I'll just be like, Blah, blah blah happened today and he'll have an opinion and i'm just like yes he yeah. is i love you know, it I, but but uh, i mean in all seriousness i'll reach out to a maggie kimball she's like i like what you're doing you know mcnew is great at, at your network and i'm like yeah, i know she's great <laughs> you know that's why we have mcnew there I love you so much, there's so many people that when i reach out they're like you know you work with mcnew and i'm like yeah i, I do uh yeah mcnew's awesome I'm it's like yeah i work for steve akeley and they're just like but you're mcnew but i'm like i work for steve akeley <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. You're, so you're a force in the industry. You you do a lot of things. I don't know that you you personally uh, it, the the industry respects you. I don't know that you know how much the industry respects you. So you're a big deal. Oh, like, you know. because I'm just like I'm just like a girl on a podcast. Sometimes I'm like sometimes I host tasting events, and I'm just like yeah. I don't. But I like it when they tell me. <laughs> Keep telling. Cool thing. It makes you special. You yeah. stay humble right. to the you're core. Humble. It and makes you stay, yes. It makes you attractive to other people who see yeah. you and see how unassuming you are about it, and you don't take on airs, yeah. and you become approachable, and you're relatable because of that. Exactly. But, but also, like, I share a lot of dumb stuff every day. I'm like, this meme's funny. But that's that's the best thing about it. You know, you're, you you don't hold anything back. 
you're just a normal person right? right who happens to like bourbon and knows a lot about it. there are so many people who do these things who are so afraid to yeah. show any kind of mistake or right right foible you're just you and you know you're going to put it all out there which is great yeah no so thank you joe for that because i'm like oh my god i share a lot of dumb stuff so like i had like a 2021 like your year in on instagram or facebook tells you like everything you post for the year and i'm like that was fucking dumb that was stupid like it was funny <laughs> but you know what that's you know instagram all those things you know you can't take yourself seriously about that anyway and that's okay exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah it's you being you Yep, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Tim, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me on the Bourbon and Whiskey Tasting Events page on abvnetwork.com and Instagram at swyguy2112. All right. A big fan of Rush, I guess. Very big fan of Rush. All right. Joel, All right, how you? Appeared. <laughs> You'll see me on Instagram following McNew at my... The name is bourbon underscore aficionado. Fair enough. Kathy, how about you? I just, I will be everywhere loving McNew and I'm only on Facebook at Kathy Cool. All right, McNew. I am on Instagram at McNew ABV. Yeah. When someone calls you Stephanie, I feel like they don't really know you. Okay. So that's always the older ones and I, right. I'm fine with it. I love it. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 always yeah. interesting to people that insist on calling you Stephanie. It's like Luke, like, Luke Artero, love Luke, love Luke so much. He's like Luke Stephanie. always, yeah. Luke will never oh, call wait, you that's McNew. Me, that's yeah, me, that's <laughs> yeah, Stephanie. Yeah, yeah. And then there's people that realize like I didn't. I changed my last name on Facebook, right? But um, I didn't ever legally change my last name, so I'm still McNew. <laughs> right. yeah. Some people yeah. don't know that. <laughs> It's fine. I'm still making it. For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got that company mm-hmm. website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out because everything that we do is out there. Our shop is out there. Our blogs are out there. Bourbon Zeppelin's out there. So much more. abvnetwork.com. Check us out. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV Network. All right. Great job today, gang. For our audience, we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Hasta luego. See ya. Peace. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Another friend of ours is the Goldstein family at Goldstone Mill. The Goldsteins offer a variety of heritage and heirloom grains to make the finest whiskeys in the world. Plus, they are more than just a grain company. They are truly consultants to make sure the grains they are providing to you or your business meet your highest expectations. Additionally, they work with mills around the country ensuring shipping is as low as possible for their customers. If you are a distillery, brewery, or even doing this at home, Goldstone can assist you. Check them out at goldstonemill.com, call them at 217-254-6613, or check in via email at hello at goldstonemill.com. Last but not least, at the top of the show, I mentioned investment opportunities at the new liquor store concept, the ABV Barrel Shop, being launched in 2022 by myself, Jim Fosnott, and Scott Creighton. We are crowdfunding some of the capital needed to open the store. Not only does it offer a return on your investment, but a lifetime of status and benefits at the store. Of course, this investment is a loan and involves a high degree of risk, which may not be suitable for all persons. Prospective investors should carefully evaluate the risk and merits of an investment, 
should confer with their own legal and financial advisors, and should be able to bear the risk of the loss of their investment before considering the investment described herein. If you would like more information, contact us via the Under Construction website at abvbarrelshop.com and fill out the form. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.